coming up on this edition of ATV News. Until it freezes, you don't know that there's a problem. We'll show you how the cold could still be creating problems for your plumbing. We'll show you how Utah State keeps its buildings nice and heated. I think in the long run, it makes sense to consolidate. We'll show you why some parents want one school district and why they won't get it. Sidewalks are clear now, but I'll tell you how much snow we could be getting based on a new prediction model. All that and more, this is ATV News. Welcome to this edition of ATV News. I'm Zahir Nasir. And I'm Marcus Lam. USU guard Max Sholga was headed to the free throw line with less than a minute left in the game when this happened. To the ball game. So 49, 10 seconds. As you might have heard, the student section's chants of Russia were loud enough to overpower broadcasters as Sholga stood at the line. The Ukrainian athlete was, has family still in Ukraine as Russia continues its invasion. USU heard committee members say they're all out for heckling, but CSU students crossed the line. It was irresponsible of, of the students at CSU to act the way that they did. Well, I mean, I'm, I, the incident uh, occurred almost one year after USU held a moment of one. silence before a game against CSU in the spectrum to show support to Shulga shortly after Russia invaded Ukraine. I got chills when it happened. Like It was a really powerful statement I think we were able to make to show support for our player. Colorado State, Utah State, and the Mountain West Conference issued statements saying the chants were unacceptable. Only Utah State mentioned Sholga specifically, while Colorado State referred to him as a student athlete from the Ukraine. We could not find a call to action in any of the statements. Cache Valley is still defrosting from last week's freezing temperatures. Anna Johnson shows you how your pipes could be in danger of bursting from last week's freeze. Fans are worried and vacuums are humming, trying to clean up after a pipe burst in the bishop's office of a Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints stake center in Nibley, damaging several rooms. This photo shows the foyer of the building with about an inch of water before volunteers cleared most of it out. The culprit? Likely frozen pipes from last week's cold front. We haven't seen a cold snap like this for a couple of years where it's um, 10 below or better. Miller says it isn't the snow or cold on the outside of the pipes that's the problem. It's the ice on the inside that will cause a break. Frost and frozen pipes is pretty, it causes quite a mess when it, when it uh, thaws out and you don't know where all the breaks are at. If the water inside your pipes does freeze, the Red Cross says your best bet is to try to warm them from the outside. Now, you might be tempted to use something like this but that's a fire hazard and could do more harm than good. The gentle heat from something like a hairdryer should do the trick. It's hard to know like exactly what to do and how to prevent it. Hersher says it is much easier to prevent pipes from freezing than to fix them after they've burst. Probably the easiest way to prevent is make sure that there's nothing that's exposed to um, extreme cold. As long as your water is moving through your pipes, it doesn't have to be full on, but just keep a trickle going in your pipes and it will keep it from freezing. Anna Johnson, ATV News. Even though historic lows aren't in this week's forecast, Harsha says it's important to keep areas around your water pipes warm and insulate pipes to prevent a hard freeze. During last week's sub-zero weather, students walking to class, but not in class. Paige Johnson takes us below ground to see how USU's heating system works. Walking around campus, students pass strange looking structures and metal hatches on the sidewalks. These lead to tunnels just beneath the surface. We have four boilers here in the plant that produces steam. We have piping that goes throughout the tunnel to all the buildings on the, this main campus. The top pipe contains the steam going to campus, while the bottom has the cooled steam that is returning to the plant. 
I took a bumpy ride through the longest tunnel that stretches from the Spectrum to the Ag Science Building. Here I'm standing right next to the Ag Science Building, except I'm in the tunnels that run under campus. And now I'm standing in about the same spot above ground. Olson says the pipes provide heating for around 40 buildings on campus, just like the Ag Science Building. And most of the other places around the valley only heat uh, individual buildings. Olson says Utah State has the largest tunnel system used for heating in the state. This system came in handy last week when temperatures reached as low as negative 30 degrees. At the Arctic, they have really cold air. And uh, usually the circulations that can keep those airs in the Arctic, but sometimes they, they, that circulation gets weaker. Zong says a polar vortex is to blame for the wind chill we experienced last week, but it isn't out of the ordinary. We actually saw almost a third more use in natural gas and um, steam usage. Olson says the central power plant is more than capable of handling the demands of the cold weather. Paige Johnson, ATV News. Olson says the tunnels make it easy to keep the pipes in good shape. If any problems arise, they are accessible to the engineers to quickly fix so that those winter temperatures doesn't affect class time. USU's Chief of Police, Blair Barfus, announced his upcoming resignation. Barfus says he's leaving due to family health issues. He held the position for seven months following the resignation of the former Chief Police, Earl Morris. His last day is February 17th. One million dollars per year. That's how much money could be saved if the Logan City and Cache County school districts were to consolidate. Claire Scott shows us why despite this consolidation, it probably isn't in Cache Valley's near future. <laughs> oh my gosh. Looking at a map of the Logan City and Cache County school districts, we asked these people what the boundaries look like. Either a donut or a bagel. Totally a donut. Though not a perfect donut, the boundaries do raise the question, why the whole? To understand school districts in Utah, you have to understand a little bit about the history. Smith says before 1908, there were over 20 school districts in Cache Valley until Utah enforced consolidation. Then two districts remained with Logan City surrounded by Cache County. I feel like we're getting swallowed up in the county sometimes. This street is all in the Logan City School District, but on it you'll find houses with kids who go to Logan, Green Canyon, and both. One of the biggest challenges we have is People who live in Logan are choosing not to send their kids to Logan schools. Parents like Thornley say combining districts could have many benefits. Superintendents say among these are equal opportunity for activities and budget. So you're talking about a, a $200 million budget and only having a savings of approximately $1 million. That $1 million could hire 15 to 20 new teachers with an average annual salary of around 50000 And as for activities... My son was on the football team last year. We've gone from over 100 kids on the football team down to 70. Combining the districts would be more of an equal opportunity. If you redrew the school boundary, that would be hard for a lot of community members because if you're already happy at the school you're at, there's not necessarily a strong desire to go someplace else. These buses picking up Logan High students are one example of partnership between the districts. We share the same transportation department and we do all of our busing together. We share our adult education services. Smith says there could be more partnerships like this in the future, but Thornley says it probably won't lead to consolidation. I honestly don't see it happening in my lifetime, maybe my kids. Claire Scott, ATV News. What do you think about combining the two school districts? You can let us know in a poll on our Facebook page. Now guys, I gotta ask, do you really think that the district looks like a big gigantic donut? Because honestly, I, don't, I can't really tell. I really think it does. I mean, in a donut, usually the hole in the center is a little bit bigger, but it's pretty close. What about you? I agree with you. Now that we're talking about a donut, I feel like I want one. <laughs> and coming up. You don't have to be a rancher or a farmer or anything like that to use dogs at all. We'll show you how anybody can be a cattle herder with the right best friend. It's great to see the mountains again after the weekend storms cleared out most of the inversion. The current temperature in Logan is 32 degrees. You had me a little bit to the right earlier. Do you want me there again? Or
Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. So how much longer do you think we're going to be studying for? Probably another hour or so. Okay. Welcome to ATV Weather. I'm Anna Johnson. Let's hop right into our national radar. Now, if we take a look at this big band of precipitation going all the way up the east side of the country, starting out down in Oklahoma and Texas, getting some rain and snow down south, moving into New York and all the way up into Canada, lots of rain going in the northwest. If we take a look a little bit closer to home, right over New Mexico, we can see a little bit of rain over there. Now, that is actually the storm that hit us this weekend and helped clear our air out, bring a little bit more healthy air in, get some of that dirt and smog out. And then up in the Pacific Northwest, we've got a ton of rain coming all along the coast, just some normal cloud cover into the states. Moving on to our state radar, we can see it's pretty empty. There's not a ton going on here. We had those big storms this weekend, but we do have a little bit of snow coming up in our future. We can take a look at a webcam of Beaver Mountain Resort. Look how beautiful those blue skies are. No clouds up there over the mountains. Our resident weather guru, Joe Cooney, took some information from the National Weather Service and created a formula to predict how much snow we can expect in the next 24 hours. Up at Beaver Mountain, they can expect to get about 1.7 inches of snow. And if we take a look over at Cherry Peak, We've got right at the top of this mountain, at the top of this chairlift, not a ton of skiers up there today, it looks like, but I'm sure they will be up there later this week because they're getting 2.3 inches of snow in the next 24 hours, according to that model. If we come down into the valley, right around in Logan, look at those beautiful clear skies without that inversion. We can only expect around 0.08 inches of snow. So we're not really gonna get anything moving down here so if you want to catch some of that snow, you'll have to hit the slopes. Now in our seven day forecast, we can see a little bit of snow is going to hit us on Wednesday, low of three degrees, nice and cold to remind us of how much we loved last week. And then moving into the rest of the week and the weekend, some cloud cover, but mostly sunny skies, highs in the upper 20s, low 30s and teens and high single digits for the lows. You are all caught up in weather and coming up. Usually, you see dogs play fetch, but have you ever seen them herd? We'll show you their skills, coming up. Quiet, please. Wait a sec. I'll take one. Oh yeah, all right, all good. Take care, way to go. Nice, bring it on. Gotcha, I'm here for you. Oh no, please, please, please. I'm waiting, interesting, not buying it, not fair. That's it. This conversation is over. Oh, brother. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. I'm having a stroke. I'm having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn
learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. Welcome to ATV Sports, I'm Katie Varga. Men's basketball played against Colorado State. They shot 18 for 39 from three-point range. In program history, that makes it the fourth most made threes in a single game. They won the game 88 to 79. Utah State women's gymnastics cover, competed at Boise State. They received team season highs on the floor and vault. Those season highs weren't enough as the Broncos won the meet. Utah State hosted its second indoor meet since 2009. The athletes won 19 events where they competed against Utah Valley, BYU, the University of Utah, Westminster, and, the Sa and Salt Lake Community College. Men's tennis competed against Grand Canyon. They began the day by taking double points. USU players held all top three spots and won 6-1. In women's tennis, the Aggies played the Bengals. They quickly fell behind in doubles, losing in all three positions. Only one Aggie could secure a point during the competition, leaving the score at 1-6. to six. You're all caught up on your Aggie sports. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Katie. The Mill Ironess Ranch is no stranger to training dogs for cattle herding. And it turns out, they're not just good at training dogs, but people too. From Washington to Idaho, these dog herders in the making tested their bond with their dog against sheep and cows. Well, you don't have to be a rancher or a farmer or anything like that to use dogs at all. These herders are working their tails off, practicing for the National Dog Trial in Wyoming this summer. Each group of cattle was sorted by difficulty and gave the herders a challenge. For more information on the Mill Ironess Ranch, visit our Facebook page. How often do you do a thorough cleaning of your home or apartment? Noah Giles shows you just how often some Utah State students clean their own apartments. Oh no! It's easy to have friends over at your apartment when it's clean, but how often do USU students actually clean their apartments? I generally clean the apartment once every other week. I try to clean the apartment at least once a week. It's a pretty good team effort in our apartment. We all clean little bits of it pretty much every day. I shoot for once a week. I do like little tidying things every day. Some of the students here at Oak Ridge Apartments say that it's not as often as they should, but it doesn't bother them until it gets really dirty. For example, like the bathroom, that one can go for like, until you see like the little ring around the toilet that you're like, yeah, that's disgusting. Grayson Crowther says it only takes a few days for an apartment to get dirty. Having stuff stick to my bee or like feeling it is gross. So I try and sweep pretty often because that's quick and good, you know, clean floors feel nice. Everyone has their least favorite chore, whether that's dusting or doing the dishes. But for some, cleaning can be fun. Father says you have to find a way to make it fun. Otherwise, it becomes a drag. I'm a disco guy. I have. I have a Spotify playlist that has like 200 songs, a little disco jam. When I asked who is typically cleaner, boys or girls, the answer wasn't too surprising. Girls, 100%. I definitely think girls are more clean. Humans are just messy, man. I grew up with four brothers and they are not clean, so I would definitely say that girls are cleaner. Adriana Mortensen says she's tidy and likes to clean every day. If it's messy, when I go to bed, I just, I can't do it. Noah Giles, ATV News.
Martinson says Oak Ridge Apartments does a monthly cleaning check, but in almost two years of living there, they've passed every single time. Thanks for joining us on this edition of ATV News. You can watch this and other editions on our Facebook page. We will leave clips with you of the USU Mardi Gras celebration. Have a great week, Cash Valley.